Octopus up there. Octopus, yes. Oh yeah, look at him. Oh yeah, wow. another octopus. There we go. Go ahead and zoom if you want. Oh wow. He's beautiful. Judy, Trinidad is delivering on the beautiful animals. Um, Trinidad <laughs> always does. <laughs> so welcome to paradise. <laughs> another moment brought to you by the 12 to 4 12 watch. 12 to 4 watch. <laughs> Caribbean reef sharks, <laughs> siphonophores, octopi, stingrays, fields of mussels, stingrays. Amazing siphonophore. Our current depth is 1,270 meters. He's like, I don't, I don't like <laughs> you guys. I'm going <laughs> to sneak away. Eric Cortez is complaining about too many charismatic megafauna. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, can we get can we get this the octopus to sit next to a, a coral or something? <laughs> uh, Scott, we might have the name of the species there. I'm not even going to attempt to say it. This is of the uh, of the octopus. Yes, there's a message from Mike. Grenelladone, Grenelladone, varicosa. I'll zoom out all day. Let me know when you've filled up those hard drives with frame grabs. <laughs> if you're just joining us on Nautilus Live, it's been a pretty interesting half hour. First, we discovered this site of mussels living down at a depth of 1,271 meters. As we started to make our way up the hill, we came across a siphonophore. And once we let him go on his way and started our ascent again, we came across this beautiful octopus. <laughs> we think this is a Grenelladone varicosa. I hope I'm saying that right. Varicosa, yeah. Of course, you know that, <coughs> that, that octopi and squid uh, and, and uh, what are the other ones? Cuttlefish. They can, the, the, the chromatophores that they have in their, in their skin, they can change they change colors and textures even behind an object. Like they can actually match the color of something. So it's like there's some sort of sensory perception he's too. No, I know. I don't I mean maybe maybe he's not I don't know. Variety. Or in the deep sea maybe he doesn't need to be able to do that. Uh, Bernie, we've just got a, a viewer who's wondering how the octopus is able to withstand the pressure down here. That's a good question. I'm not completely sure. Uh, we were talking about that uh, briefly yesterday with the mussels and some of the other uh, some of the other uh, associated polychaetes down here but they've long evolved uh, over millions of years to uh, to adapt to, they live in these environments so this is a natural pressure for them often bringing animals from these depths to the surface is uh, not good uh, but but I'm not <laughs> but I'm not really uh, this is outside of my real knowledge. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer for that. Thanks, Benny. All right, sir. <laughs> All right, how do we f <laughs> how do we feel about? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we have enough eye candy here for this from this octopus. Hi, Let's me. zoom out and uh, say goodbye to our friend, Mr. Octopus or Mrs. Octopus.